Greetings, I'm Dr. Son Son Bo, Basic Master Course Director. I'm honored to provide a lecture in the Basic Master Course. Today I'm going to talk about surgical instruments for surgery. This is what my surgery room looks like. For convenience, I use two surgical carts. There is a main cart and sub cart. The main cart is used to position primary surgical tools in 12 o'clock direction, and I share the tools with my assistant. In the case of subcart, it is positioned 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock position, and different surgical tools such as implant engine, handpiece, and tools for incision. This is what my main surgical cart looks like. You can see that it can be divided into top and bottom part. As for the top part, I assign tools that I use from time to time, and at the bottom part, there are tools that I use very frequently. On top, there's curette for periodontal treatment. There's steel bowl in the case of GBR, as well as an aesthetic ample in the case additional anesthesia is required, a saline syringe for cleansing and sufficient amount of gauze is placed. In the bottom, following the process flow of the surgery from left to right, the tools are positioned so that there's heightened visibility. In lower left, there's an aesthetic syringe as well as tissue forcep. In lower middle, there are various retractors that guide and position the flap after incision. In the right, there's hemostat and tissue scissor. At the far right, there's nylon and needle holder for suture, as well as Dean scissor. Let's look at the subcart. Different surgical kits are positioned for different surgeries, and three different blades for incision are positioned on the left. There is tissue forcep, which will hold the reflected flap, and there's also P24G, which I use for ablation, as well as periosteal elevator. After ablation, in order to remove potential granulation tissue, there is a surgical curette on the right. As for a handpiece, a sleeve is covered on top of that. I'm going to look at the surgical instruments that is necessary for surgery. As for blade, it is useful if you have three different types, number 15, 15C, and 12. If you have these three, it's quite useful. In general, number 15 blade is used most frequently. I think this has the most optimum form to be used in oral cavity. When we make incision, at times when bone surface is irregular or because of the divergent angle, if number 15 blade cannot access the flap, I use blade number 12. In other words, that will be the most distal area of the adjacent tooth to the surgical site. Along with here, in the cervical area, in order to make incision on collagen fiber, Number 12 is used. As for 15C blade, the width is narrower and it's easier to access, so I personally prefer it. In order to minimize trauma on tissue and to make fine incision, 
15C is a very good choice, so I really like using it. In making incision, what is important is not about what blade you're using, but the continuity of the incision line. There should be no disruptions. Hence, I tend to pay a lot of attention and time when I make incisions. Once accurate incision has been made, then you need to reflect the flap in a very swift manner. In general, I use two different types of tools, P24G as shown on left and Molt 9 elevator. The biggest difference between the two is the size of the head. After making incision, the key in doing a flap elevation is to do flap detachment without traumatizing flap from the most mesial side of flap line angle. P24G has small head size and the tip is very sharp, so flap detachment from bone can be very easy. Hence, it is more favorable to use a P24G when you start the flap elevation. Once the flap elevation has been performed somewhat, now you can use Molt 9 with ease of mind, which has bigger head size. And you can swiftly perform flap elevation. Flap elevation has been performed. The surgeon and assistant now needs to maintain the elevated flap. The recommended tool is the Selden, Pritchard, and Minnesota Restractor. Selden is comparatively thicker and wider, so you can stably maintain flap elevation. As for Pritchard, it is easy to respond to different size, thickness, and width of flap, so it's very useful. As mentioned earlier, compared with Pritchard, it has wider and thicker head, so it can maintain flap in a stable manner. But because it is thick, if the surgical site is tight, then there can be some disadvantages. Depending on the extent of surgical site and preference of surgeon, you can intermix the use of Selden and Pritchard. Minnesota Retractor it's a very useful tool where you can reflect and maintain a flap. It has many advantages, but as shown, the size of it is quite significant, so it cannot be used in tight surgical sites. You need to use the three different retractors depending on different situations and your preference. As for implant surgery, depending on the extent, the surgical time can be short or long. With time, the patient's ability to open mouth will be reduced and along with it, the visibility will become reduced. Therefore, use of mouth prop is strongly recommended. Incision is made on extraction site, and when you reflect the flap more so than an even bone surface, you come across irregular bone surface and granulation tissue. It is important to remove granulation tissue and make the surface even, and you use surgical curette for this end. 
In a lot of cases where it requires implant surgery, extraction is required because of unfavorable perio conditions, so the surface may be irregular. Hence, we need to trim the irregular surface, which may interfere with implant surgery. First, you can use bone ronger. If you do this, then it will help in determining implant placement position and it will not interfere with implant drilling, so it will be more favorable in the overall picture. Hemostat is very useful in removing granulation tissue or residual root of the tooth in extraction socket. Hemostat is very useful tool and when you do lateral approach in the upper case, at times posterior superior alveolar artery can be in the way and you can use hemostat to stop the bleeding. In performing implant surgery, you need a forcep to hold on to the tissue. In doing implant surgery, at times a forcep may be insufficient when you do GBR and before you do flap closing, when you make releasing incision, you need to grab onto the tissue securely. In doing that, a tissue forcep is a must-have. There are two different types of tissue forcep. As you can see, you need to use the forcep without a tooth to prevent any tissue damage. All steps within implant surgery are important, but personally, I believe suture is most important. It has immense impact on surgical result, and it takes up about half of the entire surgical time. I believe we need to choose the right needle holder. The precondition of good needle holder is that it needs to have tungsten carbide insert and the area where the beaks meet, it should have beveled corner. The needle holders that satisfy such a requirement are Mayo Hacker and Krillwood needle holder. If you choose these options, then you'll be able to proceed with suture without a problem. Also, there is a need for a scissor to cut the suture. I believe Dean's scissor is a very good option. Next is suction tip. The suction that is attached to the chair is a little bit insufficient. You need to have an extension hose and extension hose adapter and a titanium suction tip that has a thin edge should be prepared before surgery, then you'd be able to do suction in deep areas very well, and then it'll be of help in gaining visibility. Towel clamp serves a fixation mechanism of the drape that covers the patient's stomach. If you're going to get suction tip, also prepare a towel clamp so that you can fixate the drape on the patient's stomach. Then you'll be able to get good results. When we perform GPR, when you irrigate the bone graft material or if you store certain tissue for a brief period, then you can use a steel bowl. When you're preparing one guy's surgery, you can 
store the guide within chlorohexidin using this. Surgery is performed under anesthesia, ideally with one anesthesia you'd be able to perform surgery but at times anesthesia may wear off or additional anesthesia may be necessary. Anesthesia syringe and ample should be prepared ahead and this can be very useful. Up until now, I've talked about the key tools that are necessary for implant surgery. Buying these tools one by one can be quite cumbersome. A couple of years ago, I thought if someone can come up with a kit, that'll be great and Austin has actually made my wish come true. There is a surgical kit that has been handpicked by many directors who run master course. This is a very specialized kit. I'm sure you'll be highly satisfied with it once you use it. Also, there are different implant kits that show excellent performance for different treatment indications. If you utilize different surgical tools and implant the kit produced by Austin, even if you are a beginner, you'd be able to come up to speed without much difficulty and provide good results. In offline master course, you'll be able to learn practical tips and information which can be readily applicable. You'll be able to establish mentor and mentee relationship and tips and know-how will be delivered to you. So I hope to see you in offline course. Thank you.